three economic disasters that I believe will cause silver and gold to shoot the moon. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Now, let me just say right off the bat that I don't want what I'm about to discuss on this video to happen. Absolutely not. Okay, let's get that just right down on the table here. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to any of this occurring. I'm not talking about the run-of-the-mill recession here, okay? In my opinion, Precious metals like silver and gold are going to spike up when the next recession hits. I'm not going to talk about bond yield uh, curve inverting. I'm not going to talk about the repo market crisis that started like, what, four weeks ago. I'm not going to talk about horrible ISM manufacturing numbers that we had or the retail sector that is already in a recession or interest rates that are about to be cut again this month in, during the greatest economy ever. No, I'm not gonna talk about all the recession warning lights that are flashing everywhere. What I want to talk about are three end game scenarios, three big indicators that an economic crisis is occurring and a collapse is imminent. And when that happens, silver and gold aren't just going to spike. They are going to explode in response to these massive economic disasters. Now, there are more than just three, okay? <laughs> I know that. Uh, uh, I don't know, over a quadrillion dollars worth of derivatives come to mind. So there's a lot of things here. But I just want to focus, again, on three Things. I mean, come on. <laughs> we can only take so much in a single video, right? The first economic disaster that will cause silver and gold to shoot the moon is negative interest rates. I mean, come on. Just Google the term economic insanity, and I'm sure you'll find this little gem. So, what are negative interest rates? Well, Hold on. All right. I got $20 to go. All right. So let's say um, I lend you $20. Yay. Okay. And you go off <laughs> and do whatever you do with that $20, right? And then you come back to repay the loan. And what, 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 what do we got here? Well, there's 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. 18, 19, thanks a lot, really appreciate it, goodbye. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you had my 20 bucks for like, oh, I don't know, a year, and, and you're giving me back $19? Yep, that's negative interest rates, woohoo, love it. It's, it's insanity, that's what it is, come on. I mean, I mean, do you get it? The lender loses money on the deal. And, and, and here's where it hurts the saver. If I put that money in the bank, I would gradually lose money in my bank account as the bank charges me interest for the privilege. How insane is that? Again, so it punishes savers and lenders by encouraging massive borrowing. No, no, no that's a gross understatement. It demands massive borrowing because you see that is exactly what governments all around the world are demanding more borrowing more debt and that leads to the moral hazards of completely abandoning all savings forget savings let's just gorge ourselves on debt okay and, and let's engage in every moronic idea someone has to to invest what is essentially Free money, all for the sake of force-feeding borrowing. So who's doing this insanity? Well, a lot of countries, Japan, Sweden, the European Central Bank's doing it, Denmark, Switzerland, Switzerland, come on. And Germany, they just started doing it 
just this month. What about the U.S.? When are we going to get into this craziness? Well, Trump tweeted back in September of this year, and I quote, the Federal Reserve should get our interest rates down to zero or less. Yep, <laughs> that's right. President Trump thinks negative rates are just swell. You know, analysts warn that when you go to zero or negative interest rates, you do tremendous damage to the economy in the long run. Actually, even in the short run, I think, but definitely in the long run. It's perverse. It, it's going to poison our businesses. And I believe, and this is just a guess from Yankee, but I believe in, in, in less than three years, we're going to go negative. And going negative is going to destroy our economy. So when you see this happening, interest rates going negative, that's it, gold and silver, these things are going to explode in price. So that was the first. Now let's talk about the second economic disaster that I think is coming and that will shoot silver and gold to the moon. And that is bank failures. Now, we've had bank failures before, I, usually small ones in pockets. Uh, in fact, it's actually quite common to have a bank have trouble, right? And you know, usually the government steps in. I remember the savings and loan crisis of the late 80s, early 90s, when about a third of the savings and loan institutions completely failed. <laughs> and but, but you see, those were times when we had a really strong manufacturing base, right? I mean, we had great GDP, or at least legitimate GDP, and our national debt. Well, it was still a source of concern. I remember that during Ronald Reagan's time. It was downright infinitesimal compared to what we have today. The Fed's balance sheet, tiny compared to what we went through after 2008. So... That, I do remember the savings and loan crisis, but I, Yankee's not old enough to remember the Great Depression. That's when a lot of banks failed. And, and one of the reasons why banks failed in the Great Depression is because banks were using the depositors' money to make wild and crazy speculative investments, right? They, they just took the money and went nuts with it. So after that happened, uh, there was an act uh, in, in, in made by Congress called the Glass-Steagall Act. Glass-Steagall, okay? And what it did is, well, it, it, it created a, um, a wall of separation, okay, between money on one side and money on the other. Just do this, all right? So... So the wall of separation said that banks couldn't do this. They, they, they couldn't take all the money that was in the bank, right, and just invest it crazy. No, 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 no. They had to use money from those who either started the bank, um, uh, their own profits, or money that they borrowed from investors. So that would be over here. This money right here, whether it was profits or people that started the bank or other investors in the bank, you could invest this any way you wanted. But this over here was the depositors. You couldn't touch this under Glass-Steagall. Well, 20 years ago, Bill Clinton repealed Glass-Steagall. Yeah, we don't need that. No, 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 no. The wall came crashing down, and now banks take all the money, all the currency, and invest it however they see fit. Now, of course, there's some still, there's some regulations still, but that wall is gone. <laughs> they can mix your deposits in and do incredibly highly speculative things with it. They can also borrow insane amounts at insanely lower and lower rates. <laughs> So that's nuts, but there is a bigger threat out there that you need to watch for with our banks. Uh, the banks are required to withhold a percentage of all the deposits that they have. 
Now, big banks have to hold a bigger percentage, maybe up to 10%, smaller banks less, okay? But they have to hold on to it. Why? Well, it's a protection. It's to keep bad things from happening. It's to keep a run on the bank from occurring. If every depositor was going to, you know, ask for their money bank back, they better have some money in the bank. They can't just invest all of it, right? Makes sense. Well, there's a lot of talk about reducing that percentage to, to let the banks invest more money. You don't need to keep that money in the vaults, right? Or at least not as much. Does that sound nuts to anybody? Well, China is doing this. In fact, it, it did it three times since the beginning of this year, re reducing the requirement of what their banks had to hold. And there's even talk uh, here, and, and apparently the Trump administration loves this idea, right? There's even talk of radically rolling back the reserve requirements on Fannie and Freddie. The thinking, think about it, they're the ones that, that lend for mortgages. And, and I think they're sitting on something like uh, $6 billion to secure $1 trillion in mortgages. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and they want to reduce the reserve requirements for Freddie and Fannie. That's just bonkers to me. So what does that mean? What, what, what's it all about here? So when the economic dominoes start falling, Okay, so, so when bad things start happening, like uh, the, the credit markets freeze up, uh, uh, the free market starts, you know, forcing interest rates to rise like they did in the repo market. Uh, when stagflation occurs, and that's when we have both a recession and higher inf inflation, right? A stagflation occurs, right? This is something the government never, ever tests for stagflation. They just never test the stress test their banks for that. Why? Because the banks would fail under that scenario. But let's just say these economic dominoes start falling. The banks are going to fail. Plain and simple, that's what's going to happen. And FDIC and uh, NCUA, which uh, pr supposedly protects our credit unions, uh, that's not going to be able to cover the losses at all. Depositors are going to lose their money. What, what, what are you talking about, Yankee? Come on, man. You're just fear-mongering. There's plenty of money. They'll, they'll be able to take care of any failed banks. Nope. Uh-uh. The biggest failure the FDIC has ever handled was uh, Washington Mutual in 2008 during the financial crisis. You know, that was pretty big. Uh, I think they had $307 billion in assets. Okay. But um, J.P. Morgan has $2.5 trillion in assets. Bank of America, $2.2 trillion in assets. Citicorp, $1.9 trillion. You see, in the fall of 2008, there was absolutely no possibility that the FDIC could cover the losses of Citicorp or Bank of America or whoever. There was no way they could do it. And there's no way they can do it now. If you see banks failing, that is a massive indication that silver and gold are going to explode. Ho hopefully you followed some of my earlier advice and you've established a private bank before all this happens. If you want to know more about that, check out my uh, playlist on stacking the Yankee way. But anyways, that's the second massive indication that uh, gold and silver are going to go to the moon. Now, let's talk about the third thing that you need to be watching for, and that is the end of the dollar as the world's reserve currency. Whew. So, all right, what, what, what does the world reserve currency mean? Okay, so I'm, I'm, Yankee's going to give you a little history lesson. Trust me, this was before my time. I wasn't around in most of this stuff, so let me just <laughs> tell you what happened. But in, in uh, 1944, a whole bunch of delegates from uh, 44 countries got together at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. That's actually not that far from where Yankee lives. They came up with a system after the war to manage foreign exchanges that would not put any country at any disadvantage. 
it was decided that the world's currencies couldn't be linked to gold, but they could link it to the U.S. dollar, which was linked to gold at that time. So get it? So they, they could link their money to the U.S. dollar and the U.S. dollar was linked to gold. Wonderful. This became known as the Bretton Woods Agreement. And as a result, the U.S. dollar was officially crowned the world's reserve currency. All right. It was, it was backed by the world's largest gold reserves at the time. Okay. Instead of gold, other countries accumulated dollars. Okay. They, and, and, and they needed a place to put all those dollars. So they began buying up U.S. treasuries, which they thought was really secure and a, a safe store of money. That's the way it's been for quite a while now. Today, more than 61% of all foreign bank reserves are denominated in U.S. dollars. Wow. This gives America some immense economic power. I mean, they could print the currency, explode our national debt, and be pretty much fine, all right? You know, granted, they had that little pesky link to gold problem that Nixon took care of in 1971. Yeah, <laughs> got to get rid of that link. And then we could inflate our world reserve currency right to the stratosphere. Perfect. This is a great boon for us in the United States. We have, have much lower borrowing costs. And, and we can wield this reserve currency thing like a, like a weapon, right? Like we did with Iran. But what if this economic crown is removed? What if we lose this coveted status? Well, frankly, it's already starting to happen. The dollar's share of all global currencies is dropping, and there's actual growing concern over the position of king currency for the dollar. In fact, the Bank of England governor, Mark Carney, actually called the U.S. dollar a destabilizing force in the world economy. Whoa. He said that central banks might need to get together and, and, and create their own replacement reserve currency. He said the dollar's dominance of the global financial system increases the risks due to ultra-low interest rates and weak growth. <laughs> you think? And this is from an ally of the U.S. You know China and Russia, uh, Iran, and a bunch of other people are hoping for the dollar's supremacy to completely fail. But England? I mean, when, when England says that, that means a lot, guys. Folks, seriously, nothing lasts forever. Whether it's the uh, Greek drachma or the Roman denarius, or the Byzantine solidus. All of them function as international hard currencies, and all of them are gone. And even in more modern times, no world reserve currency is permanent. Come on. If and when America loses the world reserve status with its dollar, the party's over, guys. The U.S. will default on its debt, and the dollar is going to collapse under the weight of our own monetary and fiscal hubris. It's done. And gold and silver again, these are going to explode. So there you have it, everyone. Those are my three economic disasters that I believe will cause silver and gold to shoot the moon. Do I want it to happen? <laughs> no, not on your life. It's It frankly scares the crap out of me. But listen, if you're not stacking silver and gold to help protect yourself against some of these things, what are you doing? You need to start stacking now. Thanks very much, everyone, for watching Yankee Stacking. Please, I know this one was a little longer than usual, but if you liked it, please, please hit the like button down there. I would really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber of Yankee Stacking, Whoa, I would really, really appreciate if you could just hit the subscribe button. Share it with your friends, too, if you really like this video. And thanks again for watching. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.